Hi, I'm Jim Bostic, and I'm the president of the Salem Arts Association. And one of the joys of being part of this organization is participating in all of the exhibits that we put on. And in this exhibit, our Go Away exhibit, themed by travel, gives me and the other artists the opportunity to kind of play around with the themes and come up with something different. So I stepped out of my box today and I made this montage of photographs that were taken along a 450 mile drive from Salem to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where my mother lives and compiled them all together into a stop-motion video representing the journey, which is really, the show is trying to represent being about the journey, not the destination. And I thought it was a really fun way to illustrate that. I've got 450 miles here of almost 400 photographs um, taken with a, actually a toy camera that let me create a stop-motion video. It was quite fun to make and a little different from the work that you might be used to seeing from me.
Hi, I'm Peter Grimshaw, and I'm happy to be here. And um, Salem Arts Association, and this new show is called Go Away. And I love shows with a theme, like that really inspires me to do it. I kind of had that in mind to do it and places I've been. This is my piece right here. I took this in London at a place called Camden Locks. It's Camden Yards and Camden Locks. It's actually one of the hippest places in London where people go for raves and Doc Martin boots and stuff like that. But it was a quiet morning when we got there. We actually took a, a boat ride through the canals. It's London House Canals. And as we did that, we got off, we waited for the boat, and I don't know if this is the morning boat or the afternoon boat coming back, I'm not sure. But my daughter said, ooh, daddy, look at that. And we watched this bird fly through the clouds, and I waited, and I had my camera just like that, and I was tired, but I said, okay. I looked down, and I saw the clouds being reflected and the sky above, and this is the boat we had just gotten off of, and the bird went right through that cloud. You know, and I said, that's it, you know. And sometimes you're just given a photograph and, you know, you have to have my daughter point it out to me. She just happened to be in London because she finished her degree in um, Victorian literature. I better get this right, Elizabeth. Victorian literature and digitizing Dickens. So she loved London, loved all that. She showed us around all these wonderful places. You can't take a bad picture there. It's, London's truly a walking city. And I know the language, so it's great. There was no no difficulties going on walked everywhere again this boat was really nice to do and we waited for it and got back on it and just walking around a little bit more we went to a lot of the touristy places and some places we couldn't get into right away but one place we said don't leave without going to the london eye now this has been in lots of movies uh, it was in the fantastic four movie and it, what it is is one of the giant, one of the biggest Ferris wheels in the world, but it's not really a toy like a carnival thing. You actually get in it and it can have like, it's a pod, they can have about nine or 10 people and you sit in there and it goes way, 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 way up. So you're right above the Thames. So you get to look down, you get to see the Tower Bridge, the London Bridge. And we walked back again, just doing a walkabout and it's afternoon now, clouds are sort of rolling in and I looked up and just waited for the clouds to part right at that point. You know, I, I'm very peculiar about what I want. You know, I can't create a situation, but sometimes when it's created for me by nature, I just wait and I watch and the clouds parted, boom, right on that point. Now, you look at my work, I don't use Photoshop. I don't use any of these tricks. I think that's kind of cheating in a way. I wait for the moment. And the great thing about digital photography is you can take like, 200 pictures of the same thing. I don't have to wait for a roll of 24 or anything like that. And that's what I'm that's what I'm teaching now too. In fact, I was kind of brought out of retirement seriously um, by the Explorer Center, which is right over there, Center for Lifelong Learning, associated with Salem State College. And they're all 65 and older people who just want to learn more. And they said uh, they met me at the museum. I worked for PBD Essex Museum. They said, Peter, you ever think of teaching a course? So I wrote up three curriculums. I said. Has anybody taught photography? So I said, what can I call it? I said, everybody who comes up to me and said, oh, I can't do this. I just find it hard to do, hard to do. I said, how would you like to just take better pictures? And it became, take better pictures now. So together we wrote the curriculum. And I'm into my third semester teaching it right over there. It's awesome. Um, I'm working with folks that are like 70, 80 years old, and they just have such verve. It's really, really nice. And I just tell them a lot about photography is just looking, being in the right place at the right time, looking at the sky, waiting for something to happen. And if it's not happening, pass it by, walk back again. Trick for here, for photographers, polarizer. Like a polarizing filter on your lens, as you guys probably know, cameramen can really deepen and darken colors, can make like something like water, like almost like a mirror. You have to twist it, turn it a little bit, I've dropped, many photo I've dropped many polarizers into ponds, but if you work with a little bit, you get this blue, black, gray in there, and it's just, it's amazing. You don't have to do anything afterwards except print it and maybe print it a little darker. This one is pretty much just like I took it, punched up the contrast. I did a black and white version of it, but I really like sort of a wash of blue in there. You can see it, which is sort of how I wanted it. But, um... This is a great gallery, um, a wonderful space. I hope they can be able to keep it and build it. 
you know, the whole thing about it is location, location, location. It's a great place. I think it's much, much better than the other place that was up on Essex Street a little bit. Maybe harder to find off the beaten path, if you will. But once people get to know it, this is a, a wonderful space. A lot of great creative people working in many disciplines. And um, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And I, I'm just blown away by this. This is the best of show. I haven't got that since I did a uh, watercolor of an owl in high school. So this is, uh, I'm very happy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hall. Um, super amazing that I got second place. Um, so this piece is called Leaving the Harbor. Um, I was on vacation in Martha's Vineyard and I was really captured by the tattered flag um, that uh, there was many journeys that that flag had seen. So I thought it was kind of perfect for this show called Go Away. So um, I, I'm just overwhelmed. This is one of my first uh, applications to the shows here. So um, just uh, really overwhelmed. Um, but I, I'm super flattered. I kind of think I'm babbling a little bit, but um, I'm just super excited. This is such an amazing place. Um, Salem Arts Association does a lot of great work and I am really, really proud to be a part of this association. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Pelletier, and um, I made this lamp uh, next to me here. Uh, <clears throat> it's made up of um, a lot of different uh, pieces that I had in my shop, um, and I kind of pile everything together, and then it's like a puzzle. It just kind of goes together. Um, some of the features on this uh, lamp are this old camera. Um, and then I have a, right next to that is a, uh, a sprinkler head, 
Uh, and then on top of that is just an old, an old valve cover. Uh, and then a pressure gauge. And uh, the theme, of course, was uh, going away. And uh, so I figured uh, with the number plate, uh, Vermont, and the camera kind of all fit together. Uh, tried to keep the colors uh, sort of in the greens, as you can see. And um, that's about it, really. When you were making it, was it always going to be a lamp? Or did you start somewhere else? Yeah, no, it was always going to be a lamp. Um, I made uh, probably four or five different ones, uh, similar, but um, uh, this is these lamps were. I started making these about two years ago, and um, before that, uh, most of the work I did was kind of uh, large cabinets, uh, wooden cabinets, clocks, uh, cupboards, but uh, they were all um, very whimsical pieces. Um, Unusual, different, one of a kind, and um, these these this lamp uh, went together uh, just by uh, screwing pipes and gluing them, and um, that's about it, really. Why a lamp? Thank you. <laughs> a why a lamp? Yeah, why a lamp? Oh, um, well, it, it I wanted something for to do. A multi-purpose uh, you know it's also it's like functional art I would say you know um, so that's why the lamp uh, most of uh, some of the, a lot of the other things I've done uh, have been clocks so it's on the same uh, same vein uh, with the all functional art you know more than um, one use
Hi, my name is Rebecca Plummer Roloff. I'm a local artist here in Salem. I teach at Salem State University in the art um, and design department. And I am just really happy to be a part of the Go Away show. Um, my show has been inspired really the past year or so. Um, a year and a half ago I was on sabbatical and during that time I actually got to go away from all of my responsibilities at the university. Um, and during that time I actually was away in Guatemala and traveling in India and I collected a lot of fabric and scraps and I love recycle work. Um, and I love color and it so happened that during my sabbatical year my mother unfortunately passed away. She was a crafter and uh, I basically got all of her amazing craft materials. So between the collections of fabric that I had um, gotten from around my travels and all of her resources, um, I, I created a bunch of different work and had, um, had a sabbatical show last January. And so this piece, um, was really kind of has been my mantra and continues to be my mantra, which is uh, not all who are, um, not all who wander are lost. So the Tolkien um, quote, and I believe uh, that this quote, not all who wander are lost, was when the great wizard Gandalf is talking to, you know, the little people or whomever he's guiding up the mountain and you know it, it really is about the journey and my sabbatical show is called barefoot wanderings and you know when we wander we can wander on grass we wander on concrete if we wander barefoot sometimes um, we step on cracks sometimes we step on glass and it hurts so I think that part of these pieces from that show and, and my journey of going away from chaos, from things that hold my energy back, that keep me from moving forward and uh, flowing with life and growth, um, has, has really been about um, finding that place of vulnerability and trusting myself. And so being barefoot is a symbol of vulnerability. Uh, and so that's kind of uh, what these pieces are. And especially, again, this piece, there's a lot of holes in it. Um, the fabric has been torn. So that just kind of aggressive expression of tearing and ripping and breaking out is a little bit also a part of the work. But it's also the crafty side, the fun, kind of eclectic and whimsical Physical. Um, my boats as well, the three ships, um, they might be the ship of fools. Uh, I, I, I would say um, it's really, uh, they were originally pirate ships. So again, how do pirates break out? Um, Jack Sparrow in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was has been kind of an inspiration for me. And so uh, I think that that kind of um, sense of these three boats, um, they also represent my sisters. Um, so when my mom passed, the three of us continuing it on in this journey of life. And so um, those are my boats. They're made out of cardboard. A um, um, lot of fun making them. I took a, maybe about four months uh, working on them. And I really had no idea that I would be making three. I originally thought I'd start with one. I loved my second one best. And then I thought, well, gosh, maybe I should make a smallest one and let that be me as the baby in the family. Um, and lo and behold, this semester, I'm teaching a crafts class at Salem State, and our final project that they're working on right now uh, is indeed a uh, flying ship. So they have to recreate and design a, a ship 
um, in the same way. So it's it's fun for me as an artist to also be teaching because I get to share my process and inspire my students as well as the community. So I hope you come to uh, Salem Arts Association, take a look at the show. There's a lot of great work here. Um, it's so wonderful to be a part of a local arts organization that supports us. Um, we have a wonderful shop with uh, our work. I do jewelry and crafts and lots of other things and as does uh, as do many of the other artists here in this community. So thank you for listening and have a great day. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Joanna Schallenberger from Salem Arts Association, and this is my piece called Comfort. Um, the theme of our show was Go Away, and my inspiration was time I've spent out in the New ne Mexico desert. And my definition of going away is just having my spirit go away from my everyday obligations and to be meditative and present. So if you'd follow me, this is my installation. Hi, my name is Kate Babcock, uh, and I uh, am a member of the Salem Arts Festival Committee. This is my fifth year on the committee, and this year for our community art installation, we are doing a project called Be to Brick, where we are raising awareness about um, our human impact on not only our environment and uh, taking a look at how we consume and what kind of trash we produce in our lives, but also what our human impact is on um, pollinators and specifically bees. And so we are uh, taking recycled materials, we are stuffing them into uh, uh, plastic bottles of any size and uh, creating a, an art installation of um, recycled bees. And then after the pro after the uh, installation is uh, dismantled in August, uh, the the bees will be further dismantled and uh, made into bricks, uh, which will be used by the Phoenix School kids to build uh, some sort of structure out of. So they're doing a bottle brick project. So um, the Phoenix School kids will stuff them further with uh, with additional trash. You can fit up to a 13 gallon bag trash bag worth of trash into one um, one water bottle. Um, so they will pack them further and uh, make them really solid and sturdy and then they are used um, like you would use any other kind of brick uh, with mortar um, to then cons construct a uh, structure. And in developing nations they are used actually to build homes and uh, to build all sorts of buildings. And then ultimately the buildings are bulletproof. Uh, they actually retain heat in cold weather really well and they also um, uh, keep it cool in hot weather so it's an actual it's an awesome uh, building material so the, uh, the the art installation is made by all sorts of community members um, we've been holding workshops at the Phoenix School every Monday evening and uh, they've been happening also with the Council on Aging and On Point has produced some and the Plumber Home Kids and uh, a bunch of different community organizations have contributed and they will be installed uh, on Artist Row and up and down Front Street um, the week of the of the Arts Festival the first weekend in June through August so come and check them out
I can get everybody's attention for a moment. Are people in the galleries? Oh wow, who did that? Look at you, okay. Brian is so useful. <laughs> He's a handy guy. Let me get out my notes here, because I need notes. Um, so first, I, really, I, wanna, I wanna thank uh, uh, Yusuf Naj. Am I pronouncing your name properly? Our, uh, our incredible performer. A uh, round of applause for that beautiful music. Um, I will also note that uh, there are CDs available. If anybody's loving the music tonight, pick up one of the CDs over here. Um, boy, what a joy to have that as our music tonight. What a talent. Uh, Yusuf is a uh, professor at uh, Berkeley, right? Is that correct? And I want to thank Walnut, too, for being our entertainment coordinator and uh, bringing us this fabulous entertainment tonight. Yay! Thank you. Also a quick note, I'm gonna do a couple of PSAs here. You'll see SATV is here. They've been super supportive of Salem Arts for many, many, many years. And they've been coming out and making really wonderful monta video montages and broadcasts of our exhibits over the years. And uh, the ones from our last exhibit are actually broadcasting this week. So if you're on channel three um, on our local cable, um, it's actually on right, well, it's going to be on at 7 o'clock, so if I had a TV, I'd put it on. Uh, it's going to be on tomorrow at 4 p.m., Monday at 7.25, next Friday the 11th at 7 p.m., and on Saturday the 12th at 4 p.m. So if you get an opportunity, you can check out your artwork and check out our previous exhibit, um, the Muse exhibit, which is going to be broadcast this week. Which kind of brings me, so how many people in the room here are artists in one of these exhibits? You know, show of hands? So we've got, yeah, we've got a, a handful here. All right, yes, we do. So we have, we have a nice showing of our, our Salem Arts Association artists. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you for helping us make these walls amazing. Uh, they would be nothing but blank walls without you. Um, how many people in the room here are members of the Salem Arts Association? Can you show, see a show of hands? Okay, we got a lot of members, but you know what? I didn't see everybody's hand go up. <laughs> so um, here's my pitch. Being a member of Salem Arts is much more about than being an artist and hanging your work on these walls. It's a creative community, and the art on the walls doesn't mean anything if we don't have the patrons and supporters that come in to see it. So your support means a lot to us. And becoming an artist member helps us grow and continue to evolve and change the perspective of what we bring to the community. But being part of the community and joining us as a supporting member is really important because your membership and your support as a donor member helps us continue to do this and run the events and the workshops and all the wonderful programming that we do. So it's both sides. It's the artists, it's the art lovers. You all help make the Salem Arts Association happen. Keep helping us make it happen. And if you're not a member, I'd like you to consider becoming a member. It's easy to do, go to our website. Thank you. So let's get to the business at hand. Tonight, of course, we're here to celebrate this amazing exhibit, our go away exhibit, which is inspired by travel. We actually went through a couple of names for this until we came to the go away and everybody just laughed and we said, that's it. So I hope everybody gets the pun and realizes that while it's inspired by travel and the places that our artists have been, it's inspired by the journey and not just our journeys when we're vacationing, but the journeys that we all take. So thanks for everybody for playing along with our theme. Uh, our exhibition exhibition, also on display here, inspired by fashion, is in its uh, final couple of weeks through the end of the month, and I hope everybody's enjoying that as well. Uh, we would like to also tonight, as part of this exhibit, we have this special installation, um, Come Fort. If everybody gets the pun, we're just all about puns here tonight. <laughs> so uh, Joanna Schellenberger, 
our, our artist and one of our board members right here, has created this wonderful experience. If you haven't stepped into the back room to become part of this comfort experience, I encourage you. I hear everybody coming out saying how amazing it is. So Joanna, you know, it's really brilliant to see people stretching the envelope of what we call art and doing installations and creating other things other than the fabulous work that's hanging on our walls. So in addition to the exhibits here, we're all over the place. Mercy Tavern, who is known around town for their contributions to the community and kind of being one of Salem's creative art centers, uh, has chosen Salem Arts for the month of May to be their giving partner, where they donate a portion of their proceeds to the Salem Arts Association, and every month they choose a different organization. So thank you, Mercy. And as part of that experience, we will be hanging, we are currently hanging our artwork on the walls at Mercy Tavern. Um, from a select uh, half a dozen or so members of the Salem Arts Association. And there is a reception for that on Sunday afternoon from 3 to 5. And I hope you'll all consider coming down to Mercy throughout the month and, sp and spend some money and help support us. But come on Sunday and meet the artists and help celebrate the art there. So thank you, Mercy. Does everybody have a drink in their hands? I want to thank Sarah Shodian Sarah. behind the bar. Uh, Thank you, Sarah. Uh, uh, thank you, Sarah. Everybody loves Sarah. And uh, you know, one of the other big important parts of the community that Salem Arts is part of is the annual Salem Arts Festival. Uh, a lot of work going on there from Creative Collective, John Andrews of Creative Salem, uh, Salem Main Streets, Kylie Sullivan putting this fantastic event together uh, that happens every year. That'll be June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I hope all of our artists are getting their work together. Last year we had a great representation, about a third of the show was Salem Arts members. Yeah. And uh, it's really important we get out there, we, sh we show what we can bring to the community and hang our work at Old Town Hall. It's a wonderful event. And part of that event is the community effort of Beat a Brick. And we have a table over here and we have groups making bees tonight that are going to become part of that beautiful installation that I think is going to hang down on French Street all summer long. So uh, get in line over here and uh, make your recycled bees and the plastic bottles are then going to be transformed into useful materials. So thank you Salem Arts and thank you Beat a Brick. I want everybody to mark their calendars coming up in the middle of June. Uh, what date does H7G start? The residency starts, I believe, on the 18th, goes through the 31st. So from the 18th through the end of May, we will be doing our end plan era residency at the House of the Seven Gables, uh, ending on the 31st as, a, as an exhibit at the House of the Seven Gables on, on the 1st. On Thursday night, and then, all, no, it's the 30th, uh, the first is Friday. So all of that work will then be coming here. We will have an art reception here for that work as well on Sunday the 3rd. Uh, we are not doing an art reception on the 1st because we want everybody to go to Old Town Hall and celebrate the Arts Festival. We will be doing our reception here the following Friday. That exhibit is called Game On, and it's inspired by the... I think it's the 130th anniversary of Parker Brothers. And so we're, in, we're challenging our artists to create works that are inspired by games, um, by play, and by that experience of sitting around with your family and, and entertaining each other through gaming. That'll be a Friday the 7th of June. Friday the 8th, sorry. I, don't, I should have written all of this down properly. So, but I, the, the real thing is artists get your work together for Game On. It's going to be our next fa fantastic exhibit. And I'm going to turn this over to Heather Stewart, who's our uh, current curator of this exhibit and all of our exhibits. She's doing a good, great job. Her and her helpers, uh, one of them her husband, who I don't think he's here tonight, but helped hang the show. Doug Major, one of our board members who helped to hang the show. Uh, Cynthia Smizek, who was one of our volunteers who was helping with Take In. We got a whole, it takes an army of people to hang these shows and put them together. And I hope you all appreciate being here. I'm going to turn this over to Heather now. Thank you, Jim. Um, uh, for, it's wonderful to be part of Salem Arts Association, and I'm really having, it's thrilling to be a curator here. But without further ado, let me talk a little bit about this exhibit. Go Away, um, our juror was Patricia White, who's, um, who's a artist and also a world traveler. 
therefore a perfect person to um, cure, to um, jury this particular exhibit. She's shown her work in the U.S., Canada, and South Korea. She was a designer for MoMA and Christie's after graduating with her BFA from RISD, where she studied monoprinting with um, Mike, Michael Majur. Um, her, she's board, a board member of the Monotype Guild and, and the Cambridge Art Association, um, where she's also the exhibit committee on the exhibit committee and a trustee at RISD and a lifetime trust recently made a lifetime trustee at RISD. So she's a, a like fantastic person. As I said, she's a world traveler. She too has made a number of pieces of artwork based on her travels. Um, and then here is what she said about the work. Um, her best in show number one was Peter Grimshaw's Camden Locks. Um, of which she said that it was a very powerful and dramatic, but strange and a bit erotic because you don't know quite what is going on. Um, beautiful photograph. It's in the gallery there. You should take a look at it. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. She, she, she absolutely loved your piece. Um, number two was Elizabeth Hall, Leaving the Harbor, and of which she who's also a, a new member. So, it, um, so she said, of this she said, the colors look so dyed and the way it's presented. It could be very ordinary, but the way it's presented brings it to a whole new dramatic level. She particularly liked the tone uh, changes in the sky. And the piece is right over there. Um, the uh, number three was um, Robert Pelletier. Robert. My, my um, apologies if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Um, and of this piece, she said, um, it's so mechanical looking, but in the neatest, cleanest way. It reminded her of the work of Lorraine Sullivan, whose work is actually similar, uh, who she thought was similar, but her work is very grimy. And of this, she said, it has the look of a kind of toy where you, where you click something and it sets off a chain reaction. Um, and she said, for a mechanical thing with bits and pieces of parts, it's so neat and literally neat as well. <laughs> so um, big, big thank you to for Pat for um, during this exhibit and for all these wonderful artists um, all, and everyone here for coming out to this exhi exhibition. Oh, I should also say our people's choice. Um, oh, I should mention the honorable. Actually, I should mention the honorable mentions as well. I'm not going to go into what she said about them, but we have honorable mentions for Rebecca Plummer Roloff's Ships of Fools that are up here. Everybody look up. Um, for uh, Mary Best's Take a Road Trip. And... And for James Bostick's 450 Miles on August 11, 2011. Um, and our People's Choice Awards, um, we're taking in for um, your, let us know what your favorite um, piece is. Please help us to jury this exhibit um, and give us information about your People's Choice Awards back here. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.